Hey, welcome back. This is Dino, and in this uh, um, analysis of an article, we're going to be going through the finders, how technology disrupted the truth. A couple big framing questions to think of as we go through it. How does new technology threaten the truth? Why is this important? And are there ways to help the, the press and society tell or share the truth? So keep those in mind. The first quote is a juicy, juicy one. Quote, social media hasn't just swallowed journalism, it has swallowed everything. It has swallowed political campaigns, banking systems, personal histories, the leisure industry, retail, even government and security. What is the impact of social media swallowing everything? Um, sort of going off of the ideas, Marshall McLuhan, because of the way that social media prizes engagement above everything, prizes people interacting with one another, it has changed these, these uh, some of these, in, uh, these, um, industries and human affairs in, in various ways, like say, for example, political campaigns, the news and factoids and tidbits about political campaigns, the ones are, that are the most engaging, usually most sensationalistic are the ones that are, 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 are surfaced more than anything. And those types of things happen throughout our lives because of social media's impact. Another great quote, it's very indicative of bigger trends. Publications curated by editors have in many cases been replaced by a stream of information chosen by friends, contacts, and family processed by secret algorithms. What roles do news curators and editors play? 10, 15 years ago, before social media became really big, newspaper editors, magazine editors, editors at work in that, are, that are executive producing news programming on television and radio, those people dictated the news that we saw. Now, there's so many different platforms that generate news online. Now, those clickbaity headlines and articles are shared by friends, contacts, and family, and they're all amplified by secret algorithms that help to prize engagement more than anything else. So, what's the impact of curation moving from the pros? One of the things is, is it's the centralized authority that gave you the news has been uh, diversified among a bunch of different people who may not have the same expertise in what is news, what is responsible news, than, than the newspaper and news editors. Here's another great quote. The diversity that the World Wide Web had originally envisioned has given way to the decentralization of information inside a few select social networks, and the end result is making us all as powerful in relation to government and corporations. And that's by Hossein Darakshan. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. A couple of questions from that. Why do we want a diversified and decentralized web? And are there any issues with the diverse web, uh, such as there being multiple platforms? Um, uh, in terms of question one, we've always sort of prized the diverse voices that you can have through the web, where anyone can post to a blog, make a YouTube video, etc. cetera. And, and the internet has been initially conceived with that idea of this plurality of voices. Now, when it's sort of put through a, a fewer platforms, it kind of takes away some of that vibrancy of, of the internet and social media. But conversely, and this is, and again, I, 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 I admit this is paradoxical, maybe potentially do we, we have a too diverse web at the same time as it's become more centralized. Um, when you get information, you can get information from, you know, um, Twitter, Facebook, uh, other platforms, and as a result, you can almost get uh, uh, various news sources, etc. You can almost get information from too many places, and I think it also can, can confuse people because it's coming in so many different ways from so many different platforms all at the same time, and it can be a bit too much for people. And I think it's made maybe too many voices that people have to sift through, as opposed to the good old days when there was just fewer platforms. There were still a lot of like major newspapers and uh, television stations and radio stations, but now it's just so much. Another great quote from Habermas. Without the flow of information gained through extensive research and without the stimulation of arguments based on an expertise that doesn't come cheap, public communication loses its discursive vitality. Uh, the public media would then cease to resist populist tendencies and can no longer fulfill the function it should in, co in the context of a democratic constitutional state. What is the impact of public communication losing discursive vitality? When we don't have this 
high quality information produced by research and expertise, a lot of sort of more coarse, less rigorous thought rises to the surface. And it beca become like, you're not discussing the, the more distilled ideas that maybe you once were. Now it's a lot of sort of argumentation about sort of side issues and sensationalism that I think is maybe not as useful as, a, as it could be. Um, and then because of this, it feels like the quality of information being poorer, um, people who are more populist in nature can kind of apply the system and, 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 and give information and, and misinformation, disinformation that might not be as good for the state. A bigger question that I, I don't have an answer for is the question to how do we make public communication better? It's really, really difficult in the social media age. Another great quote, facts and reliable information are essential for the functioning of democracy and the digital era has made that even more obvious. When the prevailing mood is anti-elite and anti-authority, trust in big institutions, including the media, begins to crumble. crumble. Not only big institutions like the media, but I'd say even in schools and universities and colleges where I've taught has also, this trust in these institutions has, has crumbled over the last uh, couple of years. A couple quick questions. Why do we need facts and reliable information for democracy? And what's the impact of a decrease in trust in institutions? Ultimately, for the first question, if democracies are, in an, are, are as a group of enlightened people discussing issues, if they have different facts or different information that's not really facts, it's maybe more lying or not full truths, it's hard to debate when people are coming off of a different fact, fact uh, base that's not unified. And then what's the impact of trust in, in institutions? It just feels like there's more chaos these days. Like no one seems to trust anything anymore. I find when I teach classes, I have to really foreground the fact that I'm not trying to indoctrinate anyone. I want people just to become more critical thinkers. And maybe my, my agenda, if anything, is to become a bit more empathetic and thoughtful about what other people are thinking so that you can kind of come to an agreement with them. Um, this is a person during, uh, because this article was written around the Brexit time, Quote, I am actively searching through Facebook for people celebrating the Brexit leave victory, but the filter bubble is so strong and extends so far into things like Facebook's custom search that I can't find anyone who's happy, despite the fact that over half the country is clearly jubilant today, and despite the fact that I'm actively looking to hear what they're saying. What a, what a powerful quote. So what are the implications of this filter bubble? So people are, are, are put in these silos, these bubbles, where those people all get a similar news, and there's other ones that get slightly different news and information. So, and sometimes those two things don't necessarily intersect. What phenomenon does this speak to? It's more the separation of people into uh, sort of more specific groups, and less cross-pollination than it could be. Why is it important? It's difficult to have a conversation when, for this example of Brexit, strong uh, side for Brexit, strong side against, if there's no intersection between those groups, again, it's really hard to have a public discourse about an issue when that people don't actually interact. Another great quote, Brexit was the first major vote in the era of post-truth politics. The listless can Remain campaign attempted to fight fantasy with facts, but quickly found that the currency of fact had been badly debased. When a fact begins to resemble whatever you feel is true, it becomes very difficult for anyone to tell the difference between facts that are true and facts that are not. So what is post-truth politics? How do we make facts matter? Post-truth post politics seems as what we're in now, where it's more important to have those gotcha moments juicy headlines, clickbait, and the actual facts and the issues that are undergirding all of this democratic process, like things like Brexit or major elections, those seem to go by the wayside. How do we make facts matter? I wish, I wish, I wish I knew. Uh, it is easier than ever to publish false information which is quickly shared and taken to be true. What is common to these struggles and what makes their resolution an urgent matter is that they all involve the diminishing status of truth. How do we deal with uh, publishing false information? Another question is, what is the impact of truth being diminished? Um, it is incredibly difficult when people have some kind of headline, some kind of news article that may not necessarily be true, and it's very juicy, very clickbaity. When people want to share it, because it's so engaging, people just share it, they get shared again and again and again. It gets amplified while more responsible news doesn't. And I don't know how you sort of excise false information, especially when it multiplies so quickly. What is the impact of truth being diminished? Um, nothing good, I don't think. That was a discussion of Viner's article, how truth disrupted, how technology disrupted the truth. 
thanks for listening and watching and, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.